Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to shrink your global header size when scrolling with Divi's theme builder. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so our work here is going to start in the theme builder. So right now I'm logged into my WordPress admin dashboard. So I'm gonna come over here, hover over where it says Divi. Click on Theme Builder. So since we're building the uh, header, we need to come over here to the global header. So I'm gonna click here and add global header. Click on Build Global Header. So now this is going to take us into our builder. So I'm gonna click here on Build from Scratch. And then I'm just gonna close this for now. So the first thing we wanna do here is to go into our section settings, add a background color. So the color we're gonna add here is going to be white. So I'm just gonna add white here to my background. Next, I'm gonna come over here to design, click on sizing and on the width here, it's currently set to auto. We need to change this to 100%. So the next thing we need to do is to come over here to spacing and add some padding. So the padding we're gonna give here is two VW both to the top and the bottom. And we also need to give this a box shadow. So I'm gonna come over here to box shadow and I'm gonna go with the first option here. And then I'm gonna set my blur strength to 50 pixels. So currently it's set at 18. So I'm just gonna change this to 50. And then our shadow color here should be fine. So let me just double check. Yeah, so our shadow color is okay as it is. So the reason why we're adding a shadow color, color there is just to um, make a distinction between the header and whatever comes down here on the content area. Now the next stage is to add a bit of CSS. So let's come over here to the advanced tab and click on CSS ID and classes. And on the CSS ID, we need to add this ID called section padding. And then next we need to add some custom CSS. And by the way, if you wanna use the exact CSS as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. So here is where I need to add my CSS code and make sure it's added in the main element. And then we also need to go to the Z index. So I'm gonna scroll down here to visibility. And on the Z index here, we're just gonna give this a very high number. So I'm just gonna give it uh, 9999. Now this just ensures that uh, whatever happens on your page, this header will be above everything. All right, so now that we have this all set, I'm gonna save this, and then we need to add our column structure. So I'm gonna click on this plus button here, and the structure that we need is this one right here. So I'm gonna go with these one quarter, two thirds, and one quarter. Okay, so there we go. So now that we have this in place, uh, before we start adding any elements, we just need to go into our uh, row settings and make some changes. So I'm gonna click here on row settings, and then I'm gonna start with my gutter width. So I'm gonna click here on design sizing. So the gutter width here needs to be set to one. Now the gutter width is just the space between the columns. So make sure it's set to one. Now this removes any spaces between the columns. Next, we wanna make sure that the columns are equalized. So I'm gonna click on equalize column height and our maximum width here is going to be 100%. So whatever we have here is just gonna be edge to edge. Now let's head over to spacing. So on the spacing here, we need to add a padding of zero, both to the top and the bottom. And on this row, we need also need to add some CSS. So I'm gonna click on the advanced tab and um, CSS ID and classes. And then on the CSS ID, we're going to add this CSS ID. And as I mentioned before, if you wanna use the exact C CSS as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so next we need to add our CSS to the uh, to the main element here. So I'm gonna paste it like that, and then we're gonna save. Now it's time to add all our modules. So as you can see here, I don't have uh, the ability to add my logo here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on these three little dots here, click on wireframe mode, and then now I have access to my modules. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button, and uh, the first one here is going to be an image module. So I'm just gonna search for it and select it. Okay, so I might as well switch over here to my desktop mode so I can see what I'm doing. Now I can add my image by placing this, by clicking on this plus button, media library. So as you can see, I have a logo here already. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it, upload an image. So now I have a logo. So what I'm gonna do next is to head over here to design, sizing, 
and uh, we need to add a width of 5VW. Okay, so now you can see the size uh, has reduced significantly. So what I'm gonna do as well is I might as well just add in my mobile uh, sizes. So I'm gonna click here on this little icon, click on tablet, and on the tablet, this needs to be 9VW. So now this is very important if you really want your uh, website to look great on all devices. Next, I'm going to click here on the phone, and on the phone, it's going to be 13VW. There we go. So now I have all my sizes set. So I'm going to save this. Next, I'm going to come over here to column two, click on this plus button, and this time on column two, this is where our menu is going to go. So I'm going to select it. So depending on uh, how many menus you have, you just need to make sure you choose the right menu here on this drop down. So as you can see, I only have main menu. So that's the one I'm going to select. And I only have two links here, but of course you can add more links on your menu. And the next thing I'm going to do now is to remove the color on the background of this module. So I'm going to click on background. And then I'm just going to click here on this transparency icon. Now let's head over to the design tab. So over here, we need to go to layout. So as you can see, it's left aligned. Ideally, we want this centered. And then on the drop down menu direction, it needs to be set to downwards. So I think the default should be fine here. Now let's customize our menu text. So I'm going to click here on menu text and just make sure that my color here is set to black and my font is Rubik. So I'm just going to search for it. Now here, these fonts are absolutely free. So you can use these, they're Google fonts. So go ahead and use them. Next, I'm going to come over here to my menu text size. So again, we also want to make sure that we set our sizes for all mobile devices just to make sure that it looks really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and add my size here. Next, I'm just going to hover over here and add my size for the tablet as well. So for the tablet, it needs to be 2VW. And then for the phone, it's going to be 3VW. All right, so I have all my sizes now in place. Now, if you're going to have any drop down menus, you might as well, you know, add all your colors for your drop down. So I'm just going to collapse this and go to my drop down menu. So on the drop down, uh, drop down menu here, you need to set your menu background color. So I'm going to set this to white. And then we also need the line the drop down menu line color. I'm just gonna click on this eyedropper tool so I can add my custom color here. So as I mentioned, uh, these colors here that I'm using can be found in the link which I'll link in the post which I'll link to in the show notes below. Now we can also further customize the hamburger menu icon color here. So let's look for that. So we need to come over here on icons and here we go. So this is the hamburger menu color. So I'm gonna click on this eyedropper tool and paste my color in here and then save. Right, so we're almost done here. The next stage is to add a button to our third column here. So I'm gonna click on this plus button and search for my button module and select it. So of course, when the button comes in here, you can see it's very plain. We need to go in and customize it. So let's start here by, uh, in fact, the, this text button text here, you can leave it as it is, or you can just, you know, name it whatever you want. But the most important thing here is to make sure your button has a link URL. So in this case, I'm just going to add a blank link. But in your case, you need to make sure that this link links to uh, whatever page or wherever you want this to link to. All right, so now let's go uh, head over here to design and start customizing this. So the alignment here needs to be set to right because we want this all the way over here to the right. So that's the first thing you need to do. So now let's go to our button settings. So I'm gonna come over here to button and for you to customize this button, you need to make sure you activate use custom styles for buttons. I'm gonna go ahead and activate that. Now let's start with our button text size. I know we have a default of 20, but we're just gonna go in and add our own sizes here. So that's gonna be our size for the desktop. Now let's click on this little icon and also add the sizes for the tablet and the phone. So for the tablet here, we're gonna set this to 1.5 VW. And for the phone, it's gonna be 2 VW. Okay, so now let's switch back over here. Next, we want to uh, add our button text color. So for our button text color here, we're gonna set this to white. And then for our background color, we are going to paste our color in here. So now you can see here, the button has been added. Next, we want to uh, work on our button border width. So for our button border width, we're gonna set this to zero. So moving on, on the border radius, we also need to set this to zero. And for our letter spacing, let's set this to one 
pixel. And then for our font, let's set our font here to Rubik. Uh, this is just that we have the same font that we used here on our menu. All right, so moving on, uh, we also want to make this uppercase. Um, so we're going to come over here to button style, set this to uppercase. So as you can see, this button here needs some breathing space. So to, to achieve that, we need to head over here to spacing. So over here, we need to add our padding here on the top of 0 0.8 and that needs to be same with the bottom as well so i'm going to activate this chain and now we also need to add left and right padding so i'm going to add 1.5 vw here both to the left and the right and now you can see the button looks way much better so the next stage here is to add a box shadow so i'm going to come over here choose the first option here and then we just need to customize these values so first of all i'm going to come over here to my shadow color so i'm going to click on this eyedropper tool and between the brackets, we are going to add these values. And these values can be found in the show notes below. All right, so now that I've added my color, I'm also going to adjust my box shadow blur strength. So currently it's set to 18. Let's set this to 30. And our vertical position, let's set this to 20. So pretty much that's all we need to do here. Let's go ahead and save. So the final part of this tutorial is to add the feature that allows the shrinking effect. So to add that, we need to come over here to the second column and add a code module. So I'm just going to go ahead and search for my code module and select it. So the jQuery and CSS code I'm going to use can be found in the link to the post in the show notes below. So I'm going to start here with the jQuery code. So notice that this code here starts with the script tag and ends with the script tag. The next one here is going to start with the style because this is the CSS code. And then I'm just going to paste it between these tags like that and then save. So now that we've added our code, all I have to do now is to save the page one more time. We can close out of this and make sure that you save all changes on the builder as well. All right, so let's test this and see if it's working now. So I'm just going to scroll up and as you can see, it's shrinking. And when I scroll back down, it's also working. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.